everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, I'm going to give you my top 5 tips versus the Mechatork final boss, and these do apply for phase 1 and 2. But before I get into that, we need to talk about the D&D collaboration event. Starting February 23rd, you can now summon Elminster Omar from the Planner Summoning. He's a new hero of the Fire Element, the Sage of Shadowdow. Before, we had Dristo Erden, who I absolutely love. This time, we also get an exclusive artifact, which is perfect for Elminster, as well as other heroes. There's even a new boss to fight, Samaster. This enemy is going to come with a multi-stage set of battles for even richer content. Really cool graphics for this one as well. There's also some other new monsters like the Dracolich and the Stone Golem. There's also new dice skins. I love the ones from last seasons and these ones look great as well. They never disappoint with the graphics. There's also the Sage Baggage, which is a special pack you can purchase that gives you an avatar frame. There's new maps, new storylines, and so much to explore. Join the D&D Legends in the Dragon Air world. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games. And also be sure to use my promo code DRAGON0223. Alright, so there's a lot of tips we can give, a detailed guide over every part of the skill, analyzing everything. But I'm going to give you kind of some of the key things that I think are either missed or that can just dramatically affect your runs. So, first of all, um, we have to talk about, well, a lot of things. Let's go in to the battle here, and I'll kind of show it as we go. Uh, there's a lot of little tiny details that are so easy to miss versus this boss. So let me bring in, I'm going to bring in my burn team, because this has a lot of those elements that we're going to talk about. So, tip number one, if you have a melee damage dealer, like Arachis, like Usha, actually, that has their, like, ultimate here, or their damage kind of in shapes like this, or, like, Usha has her other shape, let's see if I can, no, or Usha is the other example with something like this, where she has to be next to her nine block of attacks, you need to position them in this particular spot. As a melee DPS, not ranged, they will hit the balls behind them instead of only hitting the boss. If you put them in this spot, they'll only hit one ball plus the boss. And the balls have much lower stats, so you're going to do a lot more damage against them. Sorry, I call them the balls, the orbs. <laughs> but, yeah, you want to be attacking the balls more so than the boss itself. Except for one thing, which we're also going to talk about in this team. So that's my first tip number one. Make sure your melee DPS that has this type of a pattern um, is in the right spot. Now, not every melee DPS has that type of pattern. Let's see. Can I give an example? Uh, I think, you know what? Malik. Malik is a defender. So he's melee. He's on the front line. But he does have this whole thing. So he can choose to attack in that diamond shape. So like that kind of, if, if the melee damage dealer has that like Drista Warden has and plenty of others, you don't need to worry about that. All right, for tip number two, I'm going to talk about debuffs. Now there is this thing called misstep with the boss where you want to have as many debuffs as possible. I'll show that skill in a second. So the tip here is to have both Witch's Remains and the Crown on people in your team in order to get an extra debuff. Because defense penalty one is different than defense penalty two, they do count as separate debuffs. So what I'm talking about here is for the passive with misstep, for each debuff the hero has inflicted with, is inflicted with, gains one stack of misstep for unlimited duration. So this increases damage taken by 10%. So this is why people like Pargu, are coming out of the woodworks, guys. Yeah, Pargu. I know, I know. We all don't like him. He's terrible. But he applies five different debuffs throughout the battle, which can take a while to happen. So there is going to be some RNG there with someone like him. 
but that's five stacks of that extra damage taken to the boss. And keep in mind, depending on who you're using, if you're using someone like Zarloth, who has it on an AoE recharging speed penalty, if that goes on the orbs, then the, the debuffs are transferred to the boss. So when, keep in mind with the passive here, where is it here? When the crystals are dropped, or the crystal, magic crystal projectiles, the orbs, the balls are dropped, um, any of the damage and debuffs applied to them are also applied to the boss. But that's where tip number three comes in. Control effects placed on the uh, magic crystal projectiles do not affect the boss. So I'm going to go in here and give the example. So Zarloth is going to be our example. He has a fear, right? But if you want to get the most damage out of your Zarloth, you're going to manual him. Okay, there's AoE defense, decreased defense. If he's attacked normally, he's going to attack the boss, and we're going to miss this one ball in the corner. But if you manual, you can go boom, get off the boss, and attack all six balls. But watch. When that happens, there is no misstep. Deba or not misstep, sorry. Uh, what's it called? Thwarted transmission. There's no thwarted transmission happening. So this is uh gains immunity to all control effects. That's that is. But when he's inflicted with charmed, fear, or blind, the hero gains a stack of thwarted transmission. So if you are going to manual someone like Zarloth and he's no longer hitting the boss, he's no longer getting the fear. So watch when I auto. Boom, there's the thwarted transmission. Right there, there's the proof. When I auto, he's hitting the boss. Uh, another example of this, let's go back out to redeploy. I want to mention this because someone in my Discord said it, and I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't list it, does it? People keep saying to build Dane, and Dane is not good. I'm sorry. Dane is only good in Season 1 when you need someone to apply debuffs to go along with Sigrid. But Dane has a fear with this small box here. On his battle skill. This the AI for this battle skill is smart enough to attack all six balls instead of the boss, which is good. More damage and a debuff. Great. But the fear will not apply. So this is a really important thing to mention. Is if you guys are looking for that thwarted transmission to actually proc, you cannot do it unless you're hitting the boss. So um, thwarted transmission is amazing. Decreases damage dealt by 30%. So it's kind of like having a decrease um, attack type, you know, debuff in the team. It's like he's going to deal 30% less damage to us. And it hits really hard, especially in the later stages. But that's just something to keep in mind. Now, you're going to benefit more from manualing Zarloth to make sure you're always hitting all the balls after um the defense penalty is placed or whatever from like like him here with the witch's remains i'm not saying you should not manual uh, i'm saying you still should but keep in mind that people like dane are not going to give you the buff that you're ex or the control effect you're expecting because of the fact that as it says it only transfers damage and debuffs it does not say and control effects. So that's a really big misconception that we're kind of realizing a little bit late into our first run with the Mechatork. And speaking of manualing Zarloth, as I was talking about, that's our fourth tip. Manual any heroes that have this diamond shape uh, that are going to be your DPS or placing debuffs or whatever on the balls because that's going to be really important. So let's say we have um oster or or rava are your frost appliers inflicting frost you want to inflict frost on all the balls not just five of them inflicting the frost on the balls versus the boss again they're gonna take more damage they have lower stats lower defense lower hp whatever they're gonna take more damage than the boss is going to take so it is much better to actually manual so like in this team, I'm it's easy because I'm only manualing one person, Zarloth, and boom, so K Karf goes, defense penalty is placed, and then I see all the defense penalties are placed, so now is my time to manual Zarloth. 
And that that boom is going to be more than if I just let it go on full auto and he's hitting the boss with one of his attacks versus and only five balls versus all six balls. It's definitely worth it if you're trying to min max or trying to rank high to take the time to manual anybody like that. Now there's there's a lot of reasons to do it again, especially if it's someone that's placing like your witch's remains. Let's take a look at some different teams. So like in this team, my main you know, Rava is the frost applier. You want her to apply to all of them. Drista Orden is going to smack afterward. You want him to smack all of them. Uh, Trollgar is going to smack and ignore defense based on um, each frost. You want to hit all of them. So like this is a good example of a team that's really manual heavy where you really got to manual each one. But it's only once a day. It's a few teams. Not every team needs manualing, depending on if you're lucky enough to have some stuff. But if you do want to min-max and you're not happy with your damage, keep that in mind. And my tip number five is to position in a way that will make everyone go around someone like Furbot that has a heal like this. Where you need the people to actually be next to him or directly behind him, right? So this just doesn't happen. If you position everyone, okay, so you know, you guys are smart, right? We know. All right, so this lane, if you're melee, if you're melee, you can stay, you'll stay in this lane. But if you're a ranged unit, you get pushed over by the balls once they drop. And that can mess everything up. So if you want to actually keep everyone around Furboth, he's going to run forward into this position, right? So that's going to leave um, Sigrid okay, Eli okay, but none of the other people are going to be affected by his heal. He could be your only healer, depending on your, I guess, layout. But what you're going to need to do in order to make that happen is uh, set people up so they purposefully get bumped. Now, what I mean by that is Eli, Furboth is going to run forward, and then these two are going to get bumped over, <laughs> which is pretty cool, actually. Uh, so the other way to do it is here. I think as well. All right, let's see. Where is it here? I think it's this. Let me check real quick. We're, we're not worried about our gear. We're just going to push. So he's going to go forward, right? And these two girls are going to get pushed over with the first set of the balls. Boom. Oh, Eli died because he has no gear. Okay, that's a bad example. Let me bring someone else in. <laughs> so Eli is someone you would likely use because he's really good. In this position, he'll turn and face the balls and attack all of them as part of the Sigrid strat where you can get Sigrid to hit three times. But let's just pretend, um, let's just throw someone else in here. Let's pretend this is Eli, okay? Let's just pretend Haldork is Eli. All right, let's try this again. So the balls are going to drop. And the girls get pushed over, right? So now, people are around Furboth, and all of them are actually getting his heal. See, look at his battle skill. Well, that's, like, Sandra, a bad example. But his battle skill is actually affecting everybody, because they're properly around him in a formation that matters. So that's kind of like using the balls to your advantage, uh, pushing people over to your advantage to make sure that happens. I think the other example for me is this team right here. So this team right here, again, this has a lot of the things we talked about. Having a damage dealer be in the right place. Um, so, but if we if we want the um, shield for the allies, we got to make sure we push people over, right? So she's going to go forward. And we're going to be able to have um, someone in this corner and there. All right, so he's going to get pushed over. Which is funny. It's a little more difficult, to be fair, actually, with the rain, the melee units. Actually, let me see here. Does that work, too? So if they go forward, and then watch, Erich is going to get pushed over, and he'll be behind a soul day. Boom. See, now Erich is behind a soul day, and everyone can benefit from her shields. So positioning to take advantage of those kind of quirky heals, shields, whatever, from the more melee units like Furboth and Isolde that have that, re or Nathaniel, where you need them around. Nathaniel has that as well, where you kind of need people around him to take advantage of his skill. You can use the balls to your advantage. <laughs> All right, guys, but that's my 
five important tips here. There's so much to unpack with this boss. Feel free to share your favorite tips in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you haven't already, be sure to download Dragon or Silent Gods now using the link in the description or the pinned comment. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, and Epic Games.